Hi, uh, it's Mark Tippel again from a company called Biogas Consulting SA. And if you've seen my first little video on biogas basics, this in this video we can talk a little bit more about specific application of biogas on a domestic scale. You know, on a small micro level uh, in your back garden, or if you've got a small rolling, or if you've got a small farming operation. Uh, we're going to investigate what is the practical aspects of, fun, of, of it. Is it, is it possible? Is it viable? Um, are you going to get enough biogas? Um, and just generally look um, at the, uh, the aspects of project viability of biogas on a small scale. Um, as in the first video, the most important part about developing any type of biogas project and specifically applicable to small scale as well is feedstock. Feedstock, feedstock, feedstock. I keep on repeating that every time in every video um, because that's the most important part of any biogas plant that you need to understand. So on a domestic scale, what people normally uh, think of using is their waste from their kitchen, their food waste, veggie waste. Um, and also remember, you can put in your old fats and oils. It's very good um, feedstock or organic waste to put into a digester. It's got a very high yield potential. In other words, the amount of biogas that you're likely to get from any given quantity of, of waste. So fats and oils is particularly good. You would normally not put that into your septic tank system because the oils will obviously um, block up your systems. But in a digester, um, the microbes actually love the old fats and oils and it produces quite a substantial amount of biogas as well. So you need to understand what you've got available and whether you've actually got enough organic waste, whether you produce enough organic waste to make it viable in the long term. Now, generally, uh, if you've got a household of two or three people, five people, mother and father, two adults and two or three kids, uh, you actually don't really produce enough organic waste to make it viable from a financial investment point of view. If you're putting a solar hot water geyser on your roof, um, or if you even start generating electricity from solar PV, you've got a relatively short payback period. In other words, your, 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 the money you can save from your investment is going to pay off your, your investment in a relatively short period of time. We talk about three or four years time. With biogas on a small domestic scale, if you do not have access to additional waste and you're only relying on the waste produced by the household, then you're talking about a you know eight, nine, ten year payback um, because you're only going to really produce small, relatively small quantities of biogas because you've only got access to small quantities of, of organic waste. So your kitchen waste, although it's a good source, a good potential feedstock, the quantities is what, what determines the ultimate viability. So say, let's, let's call it a household of, of five people, two adults and three kids, and you take all the waste from your kitchen, you take your grass clippings, you take your, your dog droppings, um, uh, and, and you can even take, if you're on a, on a small holding, you can even take your sewage, the solids that comes from your sewage, you can put that into your digester as well. But even all of those combined, it's hardly going to give you about a half an hour's work worth of cooking gas. So you'll see that there's a, there's a very fine line between uh, the viability of investing in a biogas project, project and the amount of energy or financial reward or return you're going to get on your investment. If you're on a small holding and you've got access, you've got to cow manure or horse manure uh, or chicken manure, um, and you've got maybe huge big lawns that you're cutting, or your neighbor is keeping three or four horses or got cows or so on, the more access you've got uh, um, practically to bring to your digester, the more viable it's going to be, the more biogas you're going to produce, and the, the shorter your return on investment is going to be. From a, from a sustainability point of view, however, it is brilliant to incorporate um, a biogas plant in, in your, in your um, setup. If you're really looking at going off the grid and becoming sustainable, um, if you've looked at you know, optimizing your energy usage in your house, you've looked at solar hot water, you've looked at solar electricity, you've got LED lights in your house and so on, and you, would, you want to look at the practical way of, um, of dealing with your organic waste, then biogas become an excellent way to complete that full sustainability circle. 
And um, but it's as I said, it, it's going to take a, quite a while before you actually get a return on your investment. Um, so if you look at the implementation of biogas on a domestic scale worldwide, um, if you look at countries like China and India, they literally have millions, tens of millions of biogas digesters. But that is because the government has seen the benefit for the country as a whole of imp implementing and subsidizing the development of biogas projects. Because first of all, it's an exceptionally good waste management. So instead of the waste going into the environment, whether it's manure or food waste and so on, and, 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 and having a negative effect on, uh, from an environmental point of view, if that can go into a digester, converting it into energy, and remember the digest state, the effluent that comes out of your digester, is an excellent, excellent organic fertilizer. So the, the anaerobic digestion process removes a lot of the harmful pathogens, but it leaves the NPK, in other words, the nutrients that the plants require, is still intact in the liquid that comes out of the other side. So it's very, very good to use that digestate um, on your vegetable gardens, on your lawns. Um, you get tremendous growth and increased yields if you utilize it in the right way. Just be careful if you're actually using your, your sewage, your raw sewage, as a feedstock and incorporate it into your digester, the human body is full of toxins and not all of that is destroyed in the anaerobic digestion process. So although it will add to the biogas, the amount of biogas that you're likely to produce, you've got to be very careful how you then utilize the digestate as a fertilizer because you've still got some toxins and salmonella and whatever that's, um, that's still uh, present in your digestate. So you won't, for instance, use it on tomatoes or on your lettuce or something like that. You can still use it in soil preparation for your pl next planting season, but be very careful how you utilize it because it still contains toxins. That's why normally we say in a domestic scenario, deal with your, your, your raw sewage separately um, and utilize the biogas only for your organic waste coming from your kitchen. Now, a lot of countries um, that, that have got uh, government support to implement biogas. Those are the countries where you see huge numbers of biogas digesters being developed. As I mentioned in the East, we've already got for many, many years, millions and millions of digesters. In Africa, um, in our neighboring countries like Kenya and Tanzania, they've already got 10,000s of digesters because there's a government support program that, that, that funds, co-funds the development of the digester. We found, um, and I've done quite a few studies as the, for, um, in that line for um, um, government organizations and so on, looking at why digesters that was built two or three years ago or even longer um, is not operational anymore. And the biggest problem there was that the, the funding came externally, the ultimate beneficiary, the school or the clinic or the individual household, because they've got no skin in the game, they did not have to pay for it. There's not that buy-in to actually long-term um, operate and run and maintain the digester. So in, for instance, in Kenya uh, and Tanzania, where the Dutch uh, government uh, through one of their NGOs is supporting the development of biogas in the, in, the, in the country as a whole, they're the beneficiary at the end of the day needs to pay for the material. In other words, they need to buy the bricks, the mortar or the cement um, and the sand. Once they've got that in place, the program but pays for the rest of it. But at least they then feel that they've got some money in, um, they've invested some money into it and they actually want to keep on using it and reap the benefit from it. Then it's worth it because they've only got a relatively small investment, but they're getting quite a substantial amount of biogas then that then pays back the investment over a much shorter period of time and it makes it worth, the, worth their while. Um, so looking at the development of biogas in a, on a small scale, yeah, it's, it's touch and go whether it's a, a, a viable purely from a return of investment point of view, but from a sustainability, then it really comes into its own. Because ultimately what you've got, you've got an environmentally potentially hazardous material in the form of sewage or food waste or manure, or whatever the case might be. Through the anaerobic digestion process, you convert that into a very good quality organic fertilizer and a bonus, you got free energy in the process. 
So from a sustainability point of view, there's nothing better, really, because environmentally hazardous waste becomes organic fertilizer and you've got free energy in the process. If it's implemented on a, on a, on a holistic scale for the country, then you, you add the benefits of job creation, skills transfer, entrepreneurship development, and also the carbon mitigation benefits as well, because we're removing methane out of the atmosphere. Methane is a very potent greenhouse gas, 22 to 25 times more potent than CO2. So if we actually harness the methane and combust it, we prevent that methane that would normally have gone and escaped into the atmosphere. We, we um, harnessing that, combusting it, and then prevent you know 20, the equivalent of 22 times the um, CO2 from going into the atmosphere. So yeah, so looking at biogas on a small scale, you need to still consider you know the uh, the organic waste that you've got available. Do you have enough of it available? How it's going to be funded? Um, and also remember, most important, it's not a once-off um, activity. Biogas, the anaerobic digestion process, depend on live microbes. They need to be fed every day. So keep in mind that once you've installed your digester, you have to maintain and operate it on a daily basis. You need to make sure that you feed it every day, you check that the gas is being produced, and the minute something is not, not kosher, and normally that's a clear indication if you're not producing biogas, you need to have a look and see what's happening. Did you feed it incorrectly? Uh, did, you, um, uh, you know, did you feed it uh, too much or too little? Um, we've installed a lot of digesters at schools where suddenly in December months, the school is closed for four weeks, nobody feeds it. The digestion process still continues. So there's still a bit of biogas um, that's being produced when they come back in January. But then, you know, after a week or two, biogas just simply, although they start feeding it, uh, it stops producing biogas because nobody fed it for the previous four weeks. So you need to understand that it's a long-term commitment. Um, and if you want to really have a successful uh, biogas project and get a return on your investment, you need to commit long-term and understand that it's going to take a daily commitment and some effort from your side to make it work. But that's just biogas on a domestic scale, on a micro scale, um, in a nutshell. There's a lot more to be said. You're welcome to contact me um, on my website and ask any questions that you have. The next video we'll be looking, we will be looking at purely on the commercial side. And there's a lot of other factors that comes into play there. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.